we were up about 300 points today on the Dow and a lot of issues that are sort of at the mercy of what happens on this uh, trade front with China, uh, like Boeing and Caterpillar, they soared on the, on the prospect. We're going to avoid tariffs for a while. The Chinese promise they're going to buy more goods from us, and that should do the trick for a while and lift stocks. So the thought of no trade war uh, started a buying war at the corner of Wall and Broad. Charlie Gasparino is here on that. Uh, the Wall Street Journal's Jillian Melchior and uh, market watcher Melissa Armo. Um, what were they whooping up about, you think? <laughs> who, who? The market the traders, or Trump? Or are the traders? Friends. What well, were they doing? I, I, honestly, the only real rally, the strong, strong rally today was really Boeing. I mean, that was the big rally. The stock gapped up huge, made brand new all-time highs today. I, the market and that's had one a, whose fortunes often are tied to yes, China. Yes, but even Apple had a small rally today. Apple didn't really rally big today, which so I was So how much surprised. is China playing into this? I think it's definitely playing into it. There's um, some relief that we're not going to have an imminent trade war, that there aren't going to be tariffs you that end up imminent. functioning as taxes. You said imminent. You said still yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I, I think that this is a temporary suspension. It's the market reacting positively to that, and that's pretty predictable. Um, the, the problem we have here is that the biggest trade issues are unaddressed. We've got China acting lawlessly. We've got uh, blatant violations of intellectual property, discrimination against U.S. companies, and that is something that I'm not Sounds seeing a lot of just like Peter from. Navarro, who was completely iced out of the, these meetings. Well, sir, was so he iced out of them? Yes. All right. Yes. Despite it, what Larry Kudlow said, he was iced out of them. I, I mean, I, I, I heard he wasn't part of now it. Now, he's no. the more hawkish trade guy, yeah. like yeah. you nail him to the wall kind of guy. Y right? Yeah, and he really wants to, uh, he, he thought the president erred, and he bl blamed it on Mnuchin uh, in cutting, uh, basically putting ZTE sanctions back, you know, trying to reverse those sanctions, which those sanctions basically put ZTE out of business, the big Chinese As well they should have. As well they should have, so they deserved it. But Mnuchin went in there and, and convinced, convinced Trump to use that as a bargaining chip with the Chinese. Now, what I find really interesting about this, and that you kind of can see it happening. Trump is going to sit there, and Mnuchin and all them are going to say, we got a huge deal, bigger than anything, right? I, you, I know it's coming, and they're going to get, like, almost nothing, and they're, we're going to avert a trade war, which the markets are going to like, and at least in the short term, because anything, my, anything that you saves... You don't think this division between the parties at the White House is going to amount to much more it, than okay, just Okay, listen, un unless Navarro gets back in the seat, gets okay. back in the game, it looks like Mnuchin has basically convinced the president, let's go soft on China, and let's keep the markets up for the midterms. Well, I also think they're trying to keep their powder dry for the North Korean talks, well, right? I think that's definitely true. And I don't think this is over. By no means do I think this is over. So what it's happens over. next? They get through the talks. They get through June. They right? go meet, and hopefully that actually happens. I mean... But do you, you have to see some substantive difference in the trade gap between our countries, right? That's what the president wants. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's over. I don't think Trump's necessarily going to go soft. Will Well, they're committing to buy more goods from us, do it. No, I think the trade deficit has always been a distraction. Let's I wasn't a fan of beginning this whole trade fight I to begin with. I understand that, but, but isn't that mm -hmm. what it's going to you know, China, you say you're going to buy more goods, we want to see the deficit go down, right? I, I think, like, that's saving I, face. I, the really important issues here aren't getting addressed, though, and that's China being a bad actor. I know, but you have to... I think making small concessions on deficits is right. not super helpful. But you have the midterms coming up, and I, he's not... I, He's crazy if he's going to want to go into the midterms with a trade war that takes like 3,000 points out of the doubt. Right. Guys, that's a lot of insane. breaking news here. We'll follow this. We'll also follow the fact that gold had its worst day of the year uh, and that the dollar had one of its better days of the year. More to this.